In February of next year, Korea will be hosting its uh, first Olympic Games in 30 years after the 1988 Seoul Olympics. Pyeongchang in Gangwon province is where all the action will be taking place. The city won the bid to host the Winter Games on its third attempt. Just like Pyeongchang's dramatic win, Korea's underdog ice hockey team has been turning heads lately with some strong performances. On this week's Upfront, we take a closer look at the national ice hockey program and the history it is making on ice. With six months to go until the Pyeongchang Winter Olympic Games, President Moon Jae-in vowed an all-out effort for the successful hosting of the Games and hoped it would be a proud and comforting event for the Korean people. Earlier this year, the Korean men's national ice hockey team was promoted to the top division of the IIHF Ice Hockey World Championship for the first time in history. In the meantime, the Korean women's national team ended with a perfect 5-0 record at the Women's World Championship Division 2 Group A, which was played on their home ice in Gangneung, Korea. They rose to the highest level they've ever competed in. Team Korea's impressive performance shows how far they've come under two exceptional leaders. Jim Beck, the first Korean-born NHL player, grew up in Canada after moving there at the age of one. He became the first Asian to get his name on the Stanley Cup twice. The former defenseman was tasked with leading the Korean men's national team in 2014 after it was relegated to a lower tier of the World Championship. Ever since, Peck and the former underdog team have worked miracles on ice. The Korean women's program also has come a long way under coach Sarah Murray, a 29-year-old former Canadian ice hockey player. Her father Andy Murray is a former coach of the Canadian national hockey team and head coach of the Los Angeles Kings in the NHL. Sarah Murray has taken the Korean women's team to a next level thanks to leadership lessons she learned from her father and her single-minded passion for the sport. Peck and Murray are rewriting the history of Korean ice hockey. On this week's Upfront, we're joined by the two head coaches as they share their aspirations and goals for the 2018 Pyeongchang Winter Olympic Games. Joining us in the studio today are two people who are leading Korea's ice hockey program. Please welcome uh, Jim Peck, uh, head coach of the Korean men's national ice hockey team. Hello. And Sarah Murray, head coach of the Korean women's uh, national ice hockey Hello. team. <laughs> now, uh, I believe congratulations are in order, first of all. Uh, I hear that uh, back in April, the men's team at the uh, uh, Ice Hockey World Championship Division I tournament in Kiev, Ukraine, was promoted for the first time ever to the top tier of the World Championship. What happened there? That was a very exciting tournament. And our goal in this process towards the Olympics was to get to the championship division where the best teams in the world compete. Um, in order for us to do that, we had to do very well in this tournament in the Division I Group A. Um, the players did a fantastic job and uh, came down to the final game, the final shot to be promoted. So it was very exciting. Did you expect your team to do that? Absolutely. Well, absolutely. <laughs> you know, and, and that's what the team prepares for. Mm -hmm. And I believe in the players. They, they believe in the process. And in order for us to, to be successful in the Olympics, we had to get to the top, uh, top division. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was an exciting game. Well, you might have expected it, but uh, in, you know they're calling it the miracle in <laughs> Kiev. So, Sarah, the women's team's uh, doing quite well as well. Uh, in April, uh, at the Women's World Championship Division II uh, Group A tournament in Gangneung, Korea, uh, the women's team won all five games. And this is despite the fact that uh, women's ice hockey is still in its infancy in Korea with no professional league or university teams. What do you think led your team? to victory? Um, our girls have been working hard um, for the last three years. They've been working hard before that, but uh, really hard the last three years. We've changed you know, their workout regimen. Mm -hmm. We've changed their practice styles. We've changed a lot of things. So a lot of people think that all the progress happened last year. Mm -hmm. You know, It was this miracle that we won, but we knew that we'd been working hard for three years, and we had been building towards that. Um, and leading up to that, the 
previous world championships, I thought we should have won. We thought we should have won. Um, we had some mental, uh, emotional instability, and we had some issues with our finishing, um, but we learned from that. And as well as at the Asian Games, we learned from our mistakes, and we were able to put it all together this year at the World Championships. Do you remember what they were like when you first took over the national team? Yeah, it was it was interesting. <laughs> they lacked a lot of structure, mm. but they had never been given the opportunities. They'd never had a full-time exactly. staff, mm -hmm. um, never had full-time equipment manager, athletic trainer, so they were kind of doing it on their own. They had a full-time coach. Um, but yeah, we've added a lot more structure and they're thriving. Um, they needed it. Mm. How has the team changed since you took over, Jim? You know, it, they're hungry. They want to learn, they want to get better. And, and as a coaching staff, uh, we implemented a lot of new things, an off-ice program that helps uh, transfer their workouts off-ice onto the ice, uh, video. And again, uh, you know, our staff has grown a tremendous amount uh, with equipment managers, medical trainers, uh, managers, uh, assistant coaches, video coaches. So they're getting a lot of information now and, and they're, really, they're really loving it and absorbing it and, and wanting more. Unfortunately, ice hockey's never been a popular sport here in Korea. Uh, fans uh, tend to flock towards uh, medal-winning events like short and long track speed skating or visually appealing events like figure skating. Is that starting to change at all with your recent victories, though? Absolutely. Mm. Uh, the media has been fantastic. Uh, the growth in minor hockey has been growing uh, steadily now. And, and I think just the, the the exposure we're getting right now for hockey and, and it's exciting because I truly believe it matches the the Korean personality. It's a very exciting sport, fast, physical, skilled, mm -hmm. and once you get into it, you can't leave. You're hooked. <laughs> well, Jim, you were an NHL player and a two-time uh, Stanley Cup winner. Sarah, you had a promising career as a coach as well, so it must have been uh, a big decision to relocate to Korea of all places where ice hockey is virtually unknown. What made you decide to come? Um, it was an amazing opportunity. I didn't think twice about coming. You know, mm. you always, you know, playing as a kid, playing for your national team is your dream. You know, and now that, you know, that didn't happen for me, like coaching a national team is the next, you know, best thing I can do. And I love hockey, I love the sport. Um, and coming to Korea to a young program, it seemed like a, a really intriguing opportunity. I thought, they're young, I'm young, we can kind of grow together, and uh, I have different experience than them, so I definitely knew I could help them. Mm -hmm. Jim, what about well, you? The difficult part is when you have a family, you have children, um, they're settled, they have roots in that city. Exactly. Uh, it, that's a difficult decision to, to transport them halfway across the world. Um, as a father, you, you have to think of family first, and how is this gonna affect my family? But when my wife and I, we had conversations, at the end of the day, this is a great life experience for him. Um, on the hockey part, you know, my father and I, we've always had conversations about uh, going back to Korea, going back to your homeland, being a part of the national program, and now being a part of the Olympics. It's an exciting time. So that decision was easy on that side. Transporting my family was another issue. Mm. Well, with record-setting performances lately, Team Korea's morale must be very high. We actually went out to talk to some of the players uh, as they train for their big Olympic debut in about six months. <laughs> Thank you.
So uh, how did you feel after uh, hearing what the players had to say? They had a lot of similar ideas. <laughs> <laughs> they all thought I was really young and they were surprised that I was and pretty. Oh, pretty. pretty. Yeah, yeah, that was nice. <laughs> well, I was surprised when I met you. You, you being such a, a petite oh, really? lady. I uh, couldn't believe that you played ice hockey. Yeah. yeah, yeah. like we discussed before, for women, size isn't as important as mm -hmm. it is for the men. Right. And Jim, uh, actually, I'm told that a lot of the players uh, said you were a charismatic person. Does that describe you well? Or do you try to be charismatic because you're the head coach? Well, I, I love hockey. Mm. And I have passion for hockey, and and I believe the players bring it out of me. It, it's a combination. They want, they work extremely hard. They listen, and I want to give them more. I want to give them everything I have, and everything I've learned over the years. And um, it might come across as charismatic, mm. uh, charisma, uh, having charisma, but. Uh, you, you know, the passion, uh, we bring it out of each other. I think that's the important part. Mm. Sarah, uh, as you said earlier, um, the fact that you're young uh, seems to be uh, a, a bit of a surprise to the players. Um, what about uh, the rest of the coaching staff? You are probably younger, yeah. you know, closer to the players' age rather than the coaching staff. Yeah, age, right? my assistant coach is older than me, mm. um, but our team manager, our team manager and like all of our equipment manager, athletic trainer, they're all fairly young, mm. um, very close to my age. Mm. Um, but yeah, it, it was surprising to people when I first, you know, got the job and I was here and, you know, I don't have a lot of coaching experience and to come into a national team is, you know, very, uh, doesn't happen very often. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it was good um, because I didn't have a chance to come in and have like set, like I want things to be a certain way. I was a lot more flexible mm -hmm. because I didn't, mm -hmm. didn't have set standards. Mm -hmm. um, so it gave us a kind of an opportunity to grow together and I figured out what worked, what didn't work and they kind of figured out the same thing with me. So yeah, it was, it was almost better to come in as a young coach. Well, we actually uh, talked to uh, some of the men's team players about their head coach, Jim Peck. Uh, take a look. 네, 일본을 34년 만인가 처음 이겼는데 세계 대회에서 그때 이제 딱 라카 들어오시면서 그 되게 많이 우셨던 걸로 기억해서 되게 감동적이었어요. 무릎이 다쳐 갖고 한번 쉰 적이 있었어요. 어, 걱정하지 말고 뭐 내가 믿으니까 뭐 기회 줄 테니까 걱정하지 말고 몸잘 만들고 있으려고 이렇게, 한, 이렇게 말씀을 한번 해 주셨거든요. 근데 그게 감독님께서 그걸 딱 잡아 주셨던 게 제가 지금까지 올수 있는 저그 한마디였던 것 같아요. So you cried after the Korea Japan game. Always <laughs> crying, always, you know, I guess, and I, being a father, being older, um, I think I, I'm a little more sensitive now. Mm -hmm. And uh, to see, and, and just the emotions um, running, they talked about beating Japan for the first time. In in a lot of lot of history between Japan and Korea, and and uh, you know, um, being raised in a Korean family, you hear about the the conflicts and things. So it was a very emotional game, um, and especially it, it, that day was my um, I, I haven't told many people at all, but that day was my dad's birthday. Ah. So to me, that was a very very special day, and and for the players to come out and and play the way they did and to come out uh, uh, and winning the game was a very mo very emotional time mm -hmm. for me. Yeah, one player talked about the time he was injured and how you encouraged him. I guess you, uh, having been a player yourself, uh, understand how they feel uh, better than anyone else. Well, uh, the player, Donggu, he, he's very passionate. Mm. He loves hockey. Uh, he told me, I'm married to hockey, <laughs> you know, uh, so, and, and he's a very special player, um, and it's important. We have a long process, and he's a very important part of the team. Uh, and he was uh, he was injured in the beginning of the the first World Championships, and he wanted to get back, and he wanted to get back. But for me, it's important for the Olympics. So let's take your time. Mm. I know you can play. Do the proper treatments, get healthy, and, and he worked extremely hard to get back and, and be a very important part of the team. Now, let's see what uh, is being said about uh, head coach Sarah Murray. Uh, 
이라고 생각을 하는데 또 얼음판 안에서는 무서운 감독님인 것 같아요. 문화적인 면도 사라 감독님이 저희를 이해해 주시려고 되게 많이 노력하셔서 어려운 점이나 불편한 점은 없었던 것 같아요. 저희를 챙겨주시고 이렇게 관심도 많이 가져주시고 이렇게 웃으면서 항상 이렇게 친근하게 다가오시는데 되게 친하게 서로 같이 막 소통도 하고 되게 이렇게 잘 하시고 얼음판 위에서 뭐 시합할 때나 이럴 때는 되게 카리스마 있으시게 막잘 하시는 것 같아요. So uh, your players are saying that they feel no cultural differences when they're with you. Did you do something to prepare for your coming to Korea? Um, I think it was a lot of advice from my dad. Um, when I first came in, I wanted to change things right away. Um, and after talking to him, he taught me the, the importance of being flexible mm. and understanding mm. the players because if you go in and you try to change things right away, they're not going to respond. They're not going to like it. Yeah. They've been doing the same thing the same way for however many years and you're going to come in and try to change everything. So at the, f at the beginning, I, was I had a little bit of trouble kind of calming myself down and, and trying mm. to change things slowly. Um, but I've had a lot of help from my support staff telling me, oh, like when I should push, when I should hold back. Um, and I just try to be really observant. And, and see how the players are reacting and kind of react to how they um, respond to things. As opposed, I didn't really study Korean culture a lot mm. before I came. I just try to listen and observe mm. before I act. <laughs> yeah. Well, the players have uh, questions of their own to ask their coaches. Uh, let's see what they are. Pyeongchang Olympic 끝나고 저희 한국 아이 학교 발전 위해서 남아 계셨으면 좋겠는데 그 이후에 어떻게 될지 참좀 궁금합니다. 그러니까 감독님은 이제 북미에서 많이 이제 좋은 선수들을 많이 보셨고 그 다음에 한국에 오셔서 저희를 봤을 때 분명히 좀 차이가 있을 거라고 생각을 생각이 있었는데 감독님께서 뭐 잘하고 있다 항상 이렇게 말씀을 많이 해주셨거든요. 저희는 저희 팀을 정말 가족이라고 생각을 하고 하는데 감독님은 어떠실지 혹시 아직까지 한국 이해가 되지 않는 한국 문화가 있는지 궁금해요. 과연 한국어를 잘 하실 수 있는지. 한국어를 배우신다는 얘기는 들었는데 한 번도 들어본 적이 없는 것 같아서 네 그게 궁금합니다. So questions to uh, Jim first. What are your plans after Pyeongchang? I'm, I'm not sure yet. Mm. You know, uh, main focus right now is we had that four-year plan to the 2018 Olympics and now being promoted up to the top division, uh, preparing for that after the Olympics. So step by step. Mm. Um, we shall see where the future lies. But my, the future of Korean hockey lies in the players right now. It's not me, it's the players. They're yeah, the players need a leader. Well, yeah, you know, and, and they're all leaders in their own right. And a few of them will retire afterwards. And so it's very important for those players to carry on all their experiences they've learned in these four years up to the, uh, in the Olympics and the World Championships and bring it back to the young kids to develop them. Mm -hmm. What about the question about uh, the differences you found uh, uh, in the players between Korea and uh, NHL? You, you know, that there's, well, you know, I, I played, I was very blessed and fortunate enough to play with the world's best hockey players, uh, Mario Lemieux, Wayne Gretzky at that time. And, and the, what the difference is, is experience. You know, those players start at a very young age. Mm. They play a, a ton of hockey games. Mm. Uh, they have uh, various diff uh, the various coaches to learn from. Uh, the Korean players have, uh, you go here, you go to middle school, you go to high school, you go to university, and then maybe if you're good enough, uh, we just started that pro league, um, I think it was back in 96. So, you know, so it's, it's those are the differences in, in the sense of the experiences. Mm -hmm. Sarah, well, what about the questions for you? Have you been taking Korean language lessons? I have yeah. been, yeah. It's, uh, but it's more kind of grammar and like written and r reading. So speaking, I'm not very strong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and what about uh, Korean culture? Do you still find hard to uh, get used to? Yeah. Um, I don't know. There's just certain times when I can't gauge whether I should push the players or be nice to the players and just finding that balance of what triggers them and what makes them work. Um, our team's a little bit different because we have some young players, we have some old players, so um, our emotions can kind of be a roller coaster sometimes. Mm. So finding the right time to push and not push, um, I still need to figure that out. <laughs> There are several naturalized players as well as overseas careers on both the men's and women's teams. What do you think uh, made them decide to 
um, wear the token mark to represent Korea. I mean, what does it mean to compete in the Olympics that uh, some of them would choose to give up their own citizenship and uh, become citizens of another country? Well, being a part of the Olympics is a special time. Mm. It's a very special event. And I, I, I think when you're growing up and playing hockey, you want to play in the Olympics mm. at, at a world stage, play the world's best hockey players. Um, a lot of the naturalized players that we've had, uh, we have, have been in this country for many years already, um, playing hockey here, involved in the culture, um, being, learning the language. Uh, I had uh, dinner with the Canadian ambassador and, and he was saying, Jim, you know, the touching moment was when I saw you guys win in Ukraine and you're all arm in arm mm. and everyone, all the, the Canadian guys, the Korean guys were singing the national anthem. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're in, they're invested now, you know, they, they're team Korea. Um, and that's the way I look at them. They're all hockey players and they're all representing Korea. So they're all Korean hockey players to me. Mm -hmm. So they get along well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, um, but just like anybody, you know, some Korean guys don't get along with some Korean guys. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's not, they're all hockey players. It's not about the, the, the yeah, cultural Yeah, it's not the cultural thing. Okay. It's not, uh, uh, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it, it's been a good fit and, um, I think that's why we've had uh, a lot of success. We have uh, just about six months left until the Pyeongchang Games uh, kick off. Uh, what is your goal for the team? The uh, for the Olympics? Mm -hmm. um, we haven't really discussed, like, we want to win silver, we want to win gold. Mm -hmm. um, the teams that we're going to be playing against are very strong. Um, they have a lot of players to pick from. They've been in existence for a long time. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a tough tournament for us. So as a staff and as a team, we've discussed kind of the, the philosophy of having no regrets. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> like after each game, we can sit in the locker room no matter what the score is and we can know we did everything we could that night and we couldn't have worked out harder. We couldn't have done something else that would have changed the result. We know that we did everything we could and, yeah. and we can just mm -hmm. be kind of satisfied. <laughs> what about you, Jim? What goals do you have for your team? Well, I know we'll work extremely hard. Uh, our goal is to prepare the best we can. Um, you know, we have a, a lot of games coming up. Uh, we have a lot of practices coming up to prepare for the Olympics. And our goal is to work extremely hard mm -hmm. um, and prepare to win the gold medal. That's why Yay. we... That's what we like to hear. <laughs> well, absolutely. You know, you, you don't go into a tournament preparing to lose or preparing for second best. Mm. So we'll try our best to prepare for the gold. And if that happens, fantastic. Mm. But if it doesn't, you know, we know, just like the women's program, that we've tried our hardest and we did everything we could um, to prepare our teams. Well, Korea is not a traditional winter sport powerhouse, uh, and I'm sure there's still a lot to be done before we're ready for the Pyeongchang Games. But uh, since you have a lot of overseas experience and are now in Korea watching the preparations unfold, um, what more do you think needs to be done? Well, uh, uh, behind the scenes, you know, we had to test events in, in uh, Gangneung. Gangneung mm -hmm. um, they ran great, I oh. thought. You know, from the outside looking in, uh, everything was prepared. It looked great. Uh, the games went uh, without a hitch. Um, behind the scenes, it's like, uh, I, I believe it's, it's like you're seeing a duck on top of the water. Mm. They're nice and calm on top, but underneath they're paddling okay. like crazy. <laughs> because it's a lot of work. There's so many little details that need to be done. And having those test events help take out, uh, find some, uh, some of the bad things that they can change mm -hmm. and keep the good things that they did. Mm. What about you, Sarah? How confident are you that Pyeongchang is going to host a successful Winter Games? Yeah, we got to be a part of the test event. So they did our World Championships and the U18 mm -hmm. Championships mm -hmm. at the same time. Um, and it was to test the two venues at the same time and, and tried to do crossover with the staff and everything. And yeah, it was a great experience for us. Um, we felt it ran smoothly and same with Jim. We just kind of see what's on the surface. Mm -hmm. So to us, it, se it seemed really good, really well run. Um, everything was organized um, and it's always nice to win. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, after speaking with the head coaches and listening to the players, I'm already looking forward to seeing them in action in February of next year. I hope our viewers, both at home and abroad, will keep their fingers crossed as well for uh, Korea's men and women uh, national ice hockey teams. Well, thank you two very much for sharing your uh, thoughts with us today. And best of luck. Uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed. We'll be rooting for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. That's all for this week. Upfront, we'll be back uh, next week. Thanks for watching. Good results for the score. I believe. So, our players are working hard to improve. So, we're going to work 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 hard to i 어, 한국 아이사키가 이 정도 할수 있다, 이 정도 발전했다 그런 모습을 보여드리고 싶습니다. 그런 성원에 보답하기 위해 정말 열심히 하겠습니다. 저희 많이 노력하고 있으니까 많이 응원해 주시면 좋겠습니다. 화이팅! 좋은 모습 보여드릴 수 있도록 열심히 준비하겠습니다. 감사합니다. 화이팅! 지금 흘린 땀이 결실을 맺을 수 있도록 많은 응원 부탁드립니다. 아자!